you've got a good idea, if you've got one which you really believe is good and other people endorse that, then don't give up. Just uh, plug on, you know, until you succeed. Try, try, try again, as the old saying. It was in southern Sudan that engineer Peter Frankel first tested the idea that you might be able to use the tides to generate electricity. This was the 1970s, when the concept of renewable energies hadn't yet been born. We had the idea, could we just take something like a windmill, turn it upside down, stick it in a river, and use the river current to pump water? And we actually went ahead and did that. And then many years later, uh, in the 90s, the idea came to us we could possibly just scale that up and, and do it on a large scale for tidal power generation. What Peter Frankel dreamed of was an ambitious project by anyone's standards. Giant underwater windmills which, when turned by the tides, would generate large amounts of clean electricity. It was a challenge he was to pursue for half his life. We met Peter Frankel in Portoferry, Northern Ireland, where his dream called SeaGen has finally been realised. Nice. Oh, 30 years after having the idea, SeaGen mm. was finally lowered onto the seabed. How did you feel when you saw that happen? Um, in some ways, intellectually, I said to myself, I, I ought to be very thrilled. But we'd had a very difficult time leading up to getting it installed. And I have to say, we were, I felt quite blasé about it, really. It had been going on for so long. Oh, here we are, we got there. You know, it was that sort of feeling. But, um, but yeah, I, I, underneath... Very thrilled, you know, very pleased that it got... That was an absolute sort of iconic, important moment to, to get the thing in the water. And the next most important moment was to actually generate electricity from it. And it's been very successful at generating electricity. How much it, have you generated so far? It has. We've produced um, 1,500 megawatt hours since we started. And about half of that's been in the last three or four months because we were very restricted up until the end of last year that's the end of um, 2009, by limitations on... that There was concern that we might harm seals or other wildlife. And I think now the environmentalists who've been monitoring it are getting more and more comfortable that we're not actually going to harm anything. So they've been relaxing the conditions, and that's given us more operating hours. And as a result, we've generated a lot more electricity. What mm. you're not telling us mm. is some of the financial difficulties, because it's not cheap to do these sort of things. Where did the money come from? No, it's horrendously expensive, actually. But, sorry, I say, by human, you know, individual personal standards, it's very expensive. In terms of developing an entirely new energy technology, it's actually quite cheap. It's just that to develop technology is generally expensive, especially if you do offshore technology. So to answer your question... Um, we started off trying to seek grant funding from governments because the governments obviously are committed to trying to support this kind of thing, but they never fund it wholly. You know, we had to find industrial partners and get some money from them. And more recently, we've had uh, venture capital funds to help us. But to get CGEN built, which you can see behind, um, that's, I think, in total, to the point we are now, we've spent something in the order of, uh, I would guess approaching 35 million euros, that sort of uh, right. level, approximately. What made you pick Strangford Lock? The Northern Irish government did a renewable energy survey and they left out marine energy. And I saw their survey and said, hang on, you know, why, why, why didn't you include one of the biggest sources of renewable energy you've got? And they said, well, we didn't know anybody who knew anything about it. So I volunteered and got the task of doing a Northern Ireland... Uh, tidal energy survey, survey and that took me to some lovely places including Strangford and the moment I saw Strangford which is an incredibly energetic location and rather beautiful and nice that was the place where we wanted to do the project and uh, so I, I pushed very hard to get permission. How do you feel about this? I mean how do you feel about your life? I mean um, you must be very proud of it aren't you? Well, I'm pleased with where we've got. I, I wouldn't say we've succeeded yet. And it's always been... It's a bit like um, when you climb in the hills and you think the summit's just ahead and you get to this little, you know, little bit of horizon which is near you and then there's another hill to climb further on. And this has been a bit like that, a bit of a roller coaster. You know, for a long time, um, I wasn't at all certain that we would succeed. Either that there might be some unforeseen big show-stopping problem which, which hadn't hit us and we hadn't thought of 
or that we just couldn't raise the money, or, or that we'd be very unlucky and something would go, you don't get a second chance, you know, if, even if it's a good idea. Uh, it's so much hanging by a thread in its early days that if the thread breaks, you know, you're completely done for, basically. So there's a mixture of luck and persistence which gets us there. But we're not there yet. We've got to actually get to the stage where these things are out there earning earning a living. Um, this is still semi-experimental in the sense that it's the first one. What I want to see is, you know, at least a dozen of them up and running on a particular site, and that's that's what we're going to go to next. That's the next stage. Actually, that's the future for you. Since CGN became fully operational, Peter Frankel's company, Marine Current Turbines, has announced partnerships to develop a 100-megawatt tidal energy farm off the northern Irish coast and a 10-megawatt tidal farm off Anglesey. Thank you.